so uh, now we will uh, see flume okay a flume is uh, again a data ingestion tool okay just like a scoop we scoop we, we used uh, for data ingestion from the rdbms uh, basically uh, you know the flume is used to uh, it's, it's like kind of a streaming suppose if you are server that is uh, currently generating lot of uh, correct currently generating lot of logs uh, you know let's say or click stream analysis or not click stream analysis basically let's suppose if you are having a website where the users are continuously traveling or traversing the multiple pages uh, by looking to the of you know your project sorry of uh, your uh, the catalog of the products basically okay and they are trying to you know purchase something or try to get more information about your products so they try to do travel from here to there in your you know multiple pages they are visiting uh, suppose if you want to collect the data and the real time means out of that server basically so you can just hook up or hook your flume uh, component to one of the ports where from where the data actually you know being uh, uh, you know uh, collected uh, for that particular users visit on your website so you can you know insert the data in the real mean in, in the real time into your hdfs cluster okay so so now flume uh, is uh, only used for poc okay so we cannot use it for production uses because it is not a fault tolerant okay for fault tolerant we need to go to kafka kafka is also providing you the similar kind of uh, uh you can say ingestion way of uh, ingesting the data from some real time feed okay so you can collect the data from twitter and put it into hdf directly you can collect the data from some running server you can collect the logs from the running server and put it into your hdfs in near uh, real time basis okay so within one second delay you will get the data and that data will be searchable or queryable in your hdfs okay so uh basically in production you will definitely see the combination of kafka and spark streaming so spark streaming is a very good framework to uh, provide you the real time analysis on some real time feed okay that real time feed may come from kafka or some other streaming tools okay so but flume cannot be used in uh, uh, production why because it is not a fault on it is a, and again why flume is so flume is like pig so pig is also had been there prior to do flume had already been there uh prior to hadoop okay so again they have just integrated it make it more suitable to work with hadoop but then it had been there okay so it is not something that is that has that has got invented with hadoop okay it, it was there prior to hadoop at all so it did not have that kind of fault tolerance mechanism built because it uh, while building the flume they never had a kind of you know Uh, uh, fault tolerance in mind. It was just like kind of connect the things to one particular source of data. Uh, okay, as soon as the data get generated, collect it and put it into HDFS or some local file system. Again, so Flume will be able to help you to put the data in local file system as well as on Hadoop file system. But then for certain POCs where we we cannot you know install the Kafka server or Kafka not Kafka server but Kafka cluster basically. So uh, you will. Uh, when you you will see that basically hortonworks has come up with one called one thing called hdf hortonworks data flow platform just like hdp we do have hortonworks data platform i mean data analysis analysis platform in which we do have the complete stack currently what we are using is hdp okay you will also get something called hdf where you will have some spark streaming or storm and kafka so it is more uh, you can say uh, that particular kind of cluster is built more for doing the real time analysis only okay and it is uh, it is kept in the mind while designing the cluster that how we can use the kafka to get the fault tolerant way of collecting the data from multiple feeds at simultaneously and uh, put it into the hdfs or we can use directly spark streaming on that creating very very small batches of the data and try to work on try to perform lot of operations okay so as soon as uh, you will get one second or two second data collection the speed is there right so a minimum chunk that you can collect is for one second so in one second let's say you are giving 10000 rows right or uh, 50000 rows so on that one second data you can just pre run the analytics and publish it directly onto the tableau or some of the reporting tools basically that will just give the business real time insight in the data okay, that is very that it would be very good use case and actually it is getting used uh, that way now okay so flume again it's uh, the integrated part of your hortonworks stack okay uh, like uh, 
so currently we do not have flume so we will go and i try to add the service it is again a kind of agent only it is not a you know server and something like that so it is not a master slave architecture so where is our flume so here is the flume kafka is also there okay so it, a, a high throughput distributed messaging system so uh it is fault tolerant it is just works like uh, flume only okay so we will see kafka sometime later i'm saying next and it's only the agent that is getting installed okay so if you see so i'm saying next so you can put the flume agent config over here and depending on that configure configuration basically flume will start automatically running so i did not put anything we will make it separately because we require a flume configuration uh, to provide the information about that what is going to be the source of our data what is going to the sync and what is going to the channel okay so there are three main parts of a flume architecture one is called source then channel and then sync source is the data from where the, the so source is the uh, you can say origin of the data from where the data is coming so it is the source of the data for example it can be any web server Whose HTTP port is continuously getting or sending the data, or it can be a log file in the local file system, or of any system that is getting bigger and bigger with the continuous incoming data. It can also be a Twitter feed. Okay, so you can also connect this Flume agent to Twitter. So basically, Twitter is again an open uh, public play, public you know um, platform where you know it's like kind of social networking platform. You can say public social networking platform. there are a lot of tweets generated per second and it's like there are huge number of users around 35 crores of users are there in the tweet uh, twitter so you will get a very very good source of data in the twitter and basically to do kind of political uh, political analysis some kind of you know uh, economical analysis some kind of uh, for a particular trend analysis okay some kind of sentiment analysis some kind of you know Uh, that kind of uh, those kind of use cases basically you can easily you can easily perform on the twitter data set twitter data set basically when you see in the big data projects you will see that there are a lot of projects which at least one part of the data is actually coming from the twitter okay so there are multiple use cases you can think of that some pro some company has launched some product and then that product is getting tweeted on the uh, on the twitter and then uh, you know whoever were, the customer of that company or buying that product basically will say some bad good or neutral words neutral you know things about that product well okay so that will help the company to you know uh, further improve their services or product quality basically depending on whatever feedback they are they, those are they are getting from the twitter users okay so twitter basically you will you will find lot of different type of categories of uh, you know trends on twitter okay it's very very good and very very rich source of data okay lot of uh, projects lot of use cases lot of you know phd thesis also runs around it now channel is something uh, that is where the um, where the data that is you are pulling from the source will be placed for some time being and then after that after the time reach or after that messages number reach basically or whatever data you have collected it, it reaches some some uh, some you know uh, what we what we can say what we can say is basically minimum threshold okay so let's say suppose we have defined the threshold to be let's say 10 kb or 20 kb or 1 minute or 2 minute whatever so depending on which ever occurs first basically it will be flushed into the sink okay the sink is uh, the final destination where the data will be placed or where the, where, where the data will be stored so either it would be a local file system or console or hdf so you can put it into console local file system why it is supporting because uh, you know uh, uh, i mean natively uh, your your flume this flu architecture supports the local file system to be the final sync or final storage of your data now hdf has also got included into that uh, being a part of hadoop and console itself is like very good console is just like dump on the screen and just try to see the data right there okay you're not storing it anywhere just like in pig we just do dump it means that show the things on console don't store it anywhere okay suppose if you want to store it you need to go some separate way so basically that is what flume so flume is nothing very big source channel and sync okay now if you see this is diagram that will just explain that this is a web server that is a source source is going to be associated with your web server whatever logs that is getting generated over here will be collected by the flume source it will flushed into the channel put it in the channel for the some time for let's say some 1 minute or 1 kb or 10 go 2 kb whatever minimum threshold you will define and then finally it will be the sync and sync it is actually either connected to either hdfs or you can have uh, you know console over here console or you can have 
local file system so i will say lfs it can put the thing over here or console okay so it can either bring over here or it can also bring over here okay now you can have multiple such architecture connected to each other okay so one source can become the sync to other one sync can become to the source to other agents so you can have a kind of a pipeline of agents you can create there are a lot of uh, permutation combination you can make but this is simplest one or uh, generally we don't complicate it for poc purposes okay so this is how it looks like okay now uh, this is just like the manual installation we don't do that we already have done the automated installation using ambari okay now this is the configuration while well, sample configuration file that we can use in order to uh, connect connect so how it looks like is basically you will see that you need to define first sources sinks and channel okay name them something so r1 is source uh, k1 is sink and c1 is channel okay so this is how we can now identify our sources channel and this particular a1 is set to be flume agent okay so the agent that is so this is the configuration for agent okay so the name of agent we are going to keep it is a1 you can arbitrarily put any name for this uh, agent it could be a1 b1 c1 whatever okay Uh, give some business uh, oriented name to it okay and then define dot sources dot sinks and dot channel okay this is what is the hard coded okay it will define uh, the way so and then then just give, give this aliases to this source sink and channel now you can have a1 dot sources dot r1 dot type okay so r1 till here it is again a source here a bind and port so this is now we are defining the source type the so source type is netcat localhost 4444 what does it mean so netcat is a utility that will help you to send the data from one session to another session or one unique session to the other unique session just like kind of a telnet so the telnet is again a kind of utility that will help you to jump from one server to other server log in there do some work come back do some work work on server 1 then again jump to server 3 and do something there and then come back kind of thing so telnet will help you to uh, you know jump from one server to other server do some things and come back okay so this netcat also is uh, that kind of utility okay so we define that our source of data would be netcat that is running on local host and that is listening on port 4444 okay this is this could be arbitrarily any port again you should not use any existing port that is already being assigned to any other services just like 8020 you can not use 550070 you can not use okay already those are getting used by the hadoop core services you should not use it but anything up after 4000 port number 4000 or something you can just use those okay <coughs> then i mean whatever port you are giving you just need to make sure that it is not being listened or it is not getting used by any other services if it is free you can use it okay so you can define triple 5 or 4 times 5 5 times 4 whatever okay so what we do is basically this is how we can define our sources then the sync would be logger uh, let me just go down then we have uh, memory so the channel would be memory it means that whatever uh, memory associated with the flume channel uh, we are going to use that one uh, the messages capacity is 1000 and in each message we can have 1000 kind of you know transactions no 100 kind of transaction basically you can have that many messages so there is uh, automatically time limit so suppose if we are not sending any more messages into this channel and it will wait for one or one minute and then it will flush everything to be in the sync okay so in our case in this particular simple example we will have a sync to be our console we go down so we have just provided source and sync okay so what is our sync Sync is just logger. Okay, logger means just like put everything on console. Okay, so let me just uh, copy this and put it in one. Put it in one file. So let me create. So this is a file flume dot com. I am creating here. Again, you can just put any file name. No issues. You just need to have the configuration, anything like this. Okay. So I I put it there. Current it is saying localhost. Okay. So 
on the other session there are two session we have opened let me get out of it here we need to first check whether we do have telnet that is the netcat source of data telnet is a utility to jump from here to there it will also help you to send the messages from one session to other session to telnet is not installed just install it sudo yum install okay it won't work so exit sudo we need to be root sudo yum install uh, telnet Once we install this, basically the telnet command should be working for us. If you do telnet, it should work. Okay. So we just come out of it. So you can now send it. No issues. So basically, what we do now is we can do telnet local host. So first, we need to run our flim configuration so that. Uh, we should be start listening on port. So we will hook up our Flume agent to the port called triple four. Okay, so we already have the configuration in place. Configuration in place. So basically, vi flume dot non. So we need to. We this is our source. Okay, so we are going to send the telnet messages to port four 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 four. I will say to uh, local local host one two three four five. Okay, so this is what actually we are going to send. This is what is being there. Local host four 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 four. And when I hit it, and whatever I will type should be collected by this flume agent and show it down our yellow console. Okay, so I am just saving it. And to run the command or to run the con to flume agent, I need to use this. So logger is going to be logger is going to be console. Okay, logger info console, and we need to change our flume con con file. Con file should be slash uh, slash home slash htfs and then flume dot com. Name is a1. We already know that our name of agent is a1. Or that is what actually we have put it into the configuration. This is a1. A1 is a flume agent name. So flume ng, flume ng is the command to run agent. Agent is going to refer to a configuration. The configuration file name is home hdfs flume dot com, and the name of agent is a one. And this is d. This is actually a passing a parameter. It is telling that flume dot root dot logger because since we have used logger over here in our uh, as as a, as a sync, we are using logger. So which type of logger? The console. Okay, so we have put the console. It means that whatever message is getting collected by this flume agent is being printed on our console. So let me run it. Now it is telling that created server socket, and now it is waiting for certain messages to be there. Now let me just make it like this. From this window, I am going to send certain messages. Okay, so I am saying enter. Now I say hi. You see the hi has come. Now I say hi. How are you? So now whatever you type, see this is a real time feed. We can see this is the message we are generating. And it is getting collected by the flume agent and put it into the console, right? It's like uh, real near real time. Okay, now the thing is, if you are collecting this data, just start operating on them, just perform certain kind of operations on that, and it start generating results. That's it. So it is too too much near real time, you can say. Okay, same thing. The Kafka will work, but the problem is uh, in here, flume it does not guarantee that uh, your message will be delivered. Okay. If you really long type a long message, currently we do not have that bandwidth, and it may not, it may truncate some of the you know tail ending data. So if you see the number of case that we have got is not exactly the number of case we have typed over here. Right? So this is uh, our I mean configuration issues also. Maybe the length of the message that we are handling may not be that much. But again, what I am trying to say is basically this is not that uh, much suitable for production uses. It is not. Is stable in terms of you know it may fail, it is not fault tolerant. You you do have the chances of missing your data completely. Okay, in the channel itself, 
okay but yeah so for a small because it is fastly set up we will just set it up and start sending the messages and we are actually collecting it okay now this is how what we are saying that just to collect the message and show it on the console now the same thing can be done just to store the message into hdf so whatever messages we are sending over here will be stored in uh, stored in hdfs now the good thing about it is basically your flume channel is running right your flume channel is running uh, and you are collecting the data from here if i open duplicate uh, session and try to modify the configuration right there it will pick the new configuration and start behaving accordingly okay so our flume channel is running okay if we send something we are still able to collect over here right what i do is our flume channel is running our telnet is running i am now changing the flume configuration file right here to just change its sync to be our hdfs now okay it will tell you that as soon as you change your configuration the new configuration will be picked so let me go to switch user hdfs where is our flume.com this one so instead of logger to be this we can put this into hdfs okay so single rate only the sync needs to be changed so i'm going to use master2.cluster.com hdfs 820 flume okay. so i will just insert i am just marking this thing to be the commented out and then sync is now hdfs the path where our uh, things are going to be stored in flume data stream dot text okay so text is the right format and the file type would be data stream okay this is what you just need to put and as soon as you do this changes whatever you type over here now in this part thing it will go into the hdf and currently hadoop fs minus l as if you try to check if the flume has been created or not because we are going to put the things in flume directory if you see this is going to be put into flume directory in hdfs so currently there is no flume okay this is there is no flume directory okay now let me just try to hit something from here so i this this is for hdfs try to see if it has been now see as soon as we are we has hit it up it is now pointing the thing to flume flume data now so the running channel the running flume agent itself is very very sensitive to the flume configuration itself as soon as you change it it will be in effect directly into the nihilize you need not to restart the flume agent again you know that is very good thing about it okay you can then change whatever you want right there in the flume configuration it will be automatically picked by the running flume agent and start behaving accordingly now i did not write anything we will wait for some time and automatically we will see that uh right call back and it is now writing the things into the hdfs okay so let me just go and try to see adobe fs minus ls we should have flume created now and this flume got created now if you go inside it you will find some data directory it is a file with some time stamped value with it and he that there you will find this message called hi this is for hd so till here we had collected on console from this point onwards we have put started putting data into hdfs now this is the data file if you do hadoop fs minus get on it and see this is a message hi this is uh, for hdfs this way so we collected it through the flume agent and put it into hdfs are you getting so basically this is flume nothing else okay so we have seen that how we can uh, collect the messages right there flume channel is still running it may keep running until unless it may cross its limits or whatever okay so you can just leave it running for the night try to collect as many data sets you want for the next day work okay just only for pc again it is it can do it can go any time okay it's not that stable the current it is listening though it is very sensitive to the flume configuration it can you can just change it and it will be in effect okay now 
that's how we can just put it into HDF. Right? Okay, so this is nothing. What we will do is in, in in our one of the things we will use this flume to collect the data from Twitter and do some Twitter analysis, sentiment analysis on the top of it. Okay, so nothing much in flume. It's very easy to use again. You just need to have flume configuration. Okay just define the specification for source sync and channel that's it in the in the examination you will get the question of uh, configuring the flume agent in such a way that whatever they will ask they will ask you to uh, put the number of messages or messages per uh, lines per mess messages transaction oh, sorry transaction per message that kind of uh, you know uh, parameters they will tell you about to configure in your flume configuration and then they will ask you to start the agent and then as soon as you start it you need to check whether the data is getting collected as per the configuration or not okay you need to verify that so that is all the question in uh, HTTP certification you will get okay for flume so uh, this is flume i mean it's not uh, that big deal so any questions Okay then.